Welcome to another Telltale Books review video. This time, in honor of the birthday anniversary of John W. Campbell Jr., I'm starting a new series covering everything I can get my hands on by John W. Campbell Jr. Starting with his very first story, published in the January 1930 issue of Amazing Stories, titled When the Atoms Failed. When the Atoms Failed is the first of a two-part series starring the characters of Watterson and Gale. The second story was The Metal Horde, published in the April 1930 issue of Amazing Stories. <clears throat> and both stories I have in this really nice, well-done book by Armchair Fiction. It's a double. It's got When the Atoms Failed and The Metal Horde together as one novel. And then in the back they have Dragons of Space, which is by Aladra Septama. I'm not familiar with that one. So, When the Atoms Failed, what's it about? It's kind of typical of 1930s, late 1920s science fiction pulp magazines in that you have a couple of scientists and they invent a new method of propulsion which doesn't just <clears throat> make things a little faster, a little easier. Their method, method of propulsion does a complete conversion of energy from mass. So you only need a very small amount of mass to give you almost infinite power and drive a ship up to the speed of light. Now the moment this ship is in, invented and this drive is invented, and they take it for a test flight up into nearer space, a whole armada from Mars arrives at Earth, intent on taking over. The ship, which is named the Terrestrian, the one little ship against 20, um, I forget exactly how long, but there's, they're really huge ships with advanced weaponry, advanced propulsion. This one little ship takes them all on and kicks everybody's butt. And of course they invent some super weapons along the way in the midst of battle. I don't think Campbell intended for this story to be campy, but today, to today's eyes, this story is pure camp. It's just, it's one of those that it's just so over the top, it's hilarious. The science is kind of ridiculous. The, the plot is kind of ridiculous. The whole, I, the whole idea of this one ship, it's the very first one they ever built. It's a brand new science. And it turns out to be more advanced than everything the Martians have spent a long time developing and poured into 20 different huge ships. But hey, it's fiction. The Martians come, we put our heads together, and we come up with a whole new science, and we kick butt. Or at least the two lead characters do. And everybody else is indebted to them because they save the world. Um, pure space opera, pure camp. This is, it's, it's funny to today's eyes. It wasn't meant to be funny in 1930, but it is today. But funny in a way that makes it kind of fun. But be forewarned. If you're used to Adrian Tchaikovsky or 
George R. R. Martin or Philip K. Dick, you're probably not going to like these simple, old science fiction stories. They're just a little too ridiculous. But if, if, you, if you take it with that and you're interested in the history of science fiction, because now this is John Campbell Jr. He went on to edit Astounding Stories and started the careers of the likes of Isaac Asimov and Robert Heinlein and, and really set everything on the path to where we're at today with science fiction. There were other people back then that had something to do with it too, but Campbell certainly did play a big role in forging what we know today and pulling it up from his own stories. You know, once once he took over Astounding, he would never have purchased a story like when the Adams failed. Because the science was too ridiculous and, and the plot just wasn't strong enough. But Campbell was a teenager when he wrote, when he published this, and he, in his youthful enthusiasm, probably thought this was really great at the time. So it's an it's it's interesting for a historical standpoint. It's it's kind of fun because it is kind of campy, and. It's interesting to see the foundation, the, the roots of where this editor came from and how his ideas would change from this. I mean, When the Adams Fail was a hit when it was published and Campbell very quickly joined the top ranks of science fiction authors right up there alongside Jack Williamson and Edmund Hamilton and Doc Smith you had John Campbell as one of the most popular science fiction writers of the 1930s it's just kind of too bad at that time that he didn't write something a little more preservable but if you're interested, this book is available brand new on the Armchair Fiction website. What did I pay for this? I think $14.95, $12.95, $12.95. It's a very well-made trade paperback. And they have a large line of these old forgotten science fiction and, and even other types of books like mysteries and such kind of bringing back the old ace doubles but not exactly they do it a little differently but it's two books and two novels in one book it, it is a pretty good bargain if you like that old pulp fiction so that starts off uh, another new series john w campbell's campbell jr we have previously reviewed Who Goes There, which is probably his very best ever story. And I, I reviewed a couple others by Campbell. And now I'm going to, I've gone back to the beginning and I'm going to go through them all. I hope you'll join me for that. Come back for the Metal Horde sometime soon. And all the other videos that that we do, talking about these old stories, not just science fiction, we get into a lot of other stuff too. And so like us, subscribe to us, come on back. And I'll talk to you then.